Yo, what is going on guys? I'm here with the one and only Mitchell Martin and what did you do at the Vegas Regional? Um, I just got fifth place at the Vegas Regional as well as fourth place at the Phoenix Regional the day before. So back to back top eights in uh, two days. Uh, regionals are finally back after two years. Um, never played in one remote duel. Yep. So, uh, you know, I jumped right back in, had to get back to back tops. And before getting to um, the deck profile, we got a bunch of people for the deck profile and we like to introduce your Channel? Yep, I am Super Insane 18. Make sure you check that out. I'll see you again. Cody underscore YGO. I'm Harrison. I'm not doing <laughs> Alright, let's get that deck, sexy deck profile. Alrighty. Well, um, before we jump into the deck profile, uh, I just wanted to give some shout outs. Um, so, first and foremost, shout out to Team Jobber, my team. Um, you know, couldn't do it without their support and whatnot. Um, you know, I've been, I've been a, a member of the team for years now and uh, we're all really excited to get back to traveling to events. Um, another shout out is shout out to Big Three Deals. Um, you know, my home locals in Arizona. Uh, they, uh, they sell a lot of cases of uh, sealed product online, so be sure to check them out at uh, big3deals.com, I think. Um, but if that's not right, we're, we'll, we'll tag it. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, shout out to uh, the Arizona local Yu-Gi-Oh community as well. Um, you know, I used to I used to be like the Northern California um, represent, but I I'm claiming Arizona now. <laughs> so um, you know, shout out to Keegan and Alex right here for traveling with me, um, doing the trip, and. Uh, yeah, without further ado, let's let's jump into the deck profile. So I played a 60 card Prank Kid Pile deck. Um, you know, a lot of people think it's incorrect to play 60 cards, but um, in my opinion, I think it's uh, like the same amount of bricks for all the engines that you play. Uh, and like the cards you add um, that make it go from 40 or under 60 to 60, aren't bricks so if you see them uh like the chances of seeing each specific card obviously go down drastically um when you play 60. Uh, another key like difference is the souls engine which is just like every single card i just play five one prep uh is souls like there's not a brick incorporated with that engine um so i mean it with a field spell or like the the adventure engine you know it's it's pot of greed and a body so it, it really it really is just uh, one of the most insane engines. And you get to play more hand traps, so it's even stronger going second. Uh, you get to play some blowout cards that you wouldn't be able to play in a 40 card list. And uh, let's hop right into it. So the best one is Fanzies. Uh, it can tutor one of the spells by sending it, like if they Valor, Ash, or uh, your Doo-Doo-Doo. But, um, you know, it, it's definitely the best one. You can special off one for one. You can add it back. You can add it from deck with a Thunder Dragon Fusion. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely just the best one of the, the four. I played three Roxies. Um, a lot of people only play two of this card, or they don't like this card as much. But with sixty, it definitely increases the numbers. I played a total of sixteen Frank Kids cards. Um, you know, you can play 17, 18 with set rotation if you played a second uh, field spell, but I did not, and I did not play terraforming either. Um, so I just played the 16 copies of the Prank Kids. Um, it ran great. Uh, honestly, the only games I really lost was when I drew like three or four Prank Kids or like got hand trapped all everywhere. So, uh, you know, for the monsters of the uh, adventure token engine, it's just these four. Uh, very standard. I mean, some people like might uh, try to say like, oh, like less enchantress, less light. But if you draw like one and one or two enchantress, it's uh, like drawing this one's definitely better because it, it's also a body, so you can just special it for free after you get the token. Um, you know, I also played the Destiny Hero package, so Dasher Celestial. Uh, the reason I'm like talking about putting bodies on board is after you do your combo, you want to just put two more bodies on board um, to make the Predaplant Anaconda Verte, so you can make your uh, Dasher, um, or not Dasher, the Destiny De Destroyer Phoenix, or um, you know, you can send uh, Thunder Dragon Fusion to make a Butler. And you can even like turn something else dark and send Super Poly, which is really spicy. Um, Super Poly is honestly like the MVP of the deck. 
Um, but let's keep going with the engines. Uh, so we have the Souls engine right here, of the monsters. I play one prep as well, so five copies of Souls, really. Uh, but one being a spell, if you draw multiple, it, uh, it isn't as much as the brick. And then for the main deck, hand traps, I played three Ogre, three Ash, three Droll, as well as three Lancia. A lot of people aren't too keen on Lancia. Uh, I think Ogre and Ash are definitely by far like the most versatile, best hand traps currently, uh, but they're realistically one for ones. Um, you know, it does stop the uh, Brave package. Even like Ogre on Fate, which is insane, is still like a Nate one. They still have the token. Um, but you know, it definitely stops their play, stops the combo. Um, you know, it hits just about every deck, even versus rogue matchups, maybe not like Eldritch, but, um, you know, Ash hits literally everything. And then with the adventure token and everything basically searching, I think Droll is just insane. Um, not every deck banishes, uh, but like the adventure token, uh, you know, you, you shotgun this standby phase and, um, they can't use it, um, but sometimes they just hard draw the right. But uh, there are like interruptions where uh, Lancia comes up versus almost every deck. Uh, the other cool thing is if you know that it's going to be dead versus a certain deck, you can actually set it in your spell and trap zone and then use um, Magician Souls to send it as a spell, which is really spicy. Um, so like if it's dead, you can actually just like get rid of it and draw more cards. Or like if you draw two, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I thought Lancia was great today. Um, I, I I don't know if I'd change that or whatnot. I think the list is really solid how it is. Um, you know, it seems like a very low hand cap, uh, hand trap count in uh, 60 cards. Uh, however, I played some blowout going second spells as well, which uh, can almost be treated as hand traps. Uh, so I played three Super Poly as well as three Forbidden Droplet. Uh, Super Poly was just insane. It had uh, so much versatility with the uh, Prank Kids engine, having like fusions in the deck, as well as like the DPE, you know, that's a fusion. Uh, as well as like majority of the good decks have a dark part to them. Uh, so just being able to play the one Starving Venom is also just like very powerful. Being able to get rid of two monsters for two cards and then putting a body um, that, you know, floats into Regeki and like copies in effect. Uh, it's just an insane card right now. Um, droplet as well and also like both these cards they can't respond to for the most part like um, I just think that's such a broken mechanic in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh uh, like one of my first YCS tops was uh, with Cleefort and the stealth the same wording as super poly and uh, ever since then it's like that wording on a card just uh, you know brings a smile to my face so I, I love playing those kind of cards uh, another kind of defensive card is called by uh, you don't always see it because you're playing 60 but you know you uh, you turbo through your deck and see quite a few cards so drawing it's always nice uh, three place um, one pranks, one pandemonium. A lot of people don't play three. Um, I, I do, you know, if you if you draw one of these two, which are pretty much the bricks, um, you can just send this off the fanzies, add it back to, off do, and then, uh, you know, it's soul food. So we, we, we love the soul food. Um, but yeah, just uh, pretty, pretty standard. Some people play two pandemonium, but uh, drawing super poly with it is essentially two pandemoniums. Um, and then for the adventure engine, you know, we have the three right, one fate, one Draco back. Um, you know, it's not bad because you can still chain block with fate. I've seen some lists playing two or three, but uh, you know, you'd much rather just see your rights. Uh, I guess this card's technically part of the engine too. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it literally only, only tutors this. Um, however, like, I, I don't think I'd play more than one fate. Uh, it, it comes off sometimes, like, if you banish it off desires. Um, but, you know, or Ogre, but once once you're getting Ogred and you just have the, uh, the token, you know, you can make Link Spider into Verte and uh, just go, go on to your other engines that, uh, you know, it just tutors, basically. Um, so yeah, some of the one-ups, we have a uh, Pot of Desires, oh, before the one-ups, um, two Fusion Destiny. You know, it's great to draw, obviously, you know, you do it at the end, um, but it's also just insane to send off Verte. Um, it's pretty much the engine with like half bricks, half fusion destiny, but it's even come up. Uh, actually, there's Cody, funny enough. I uh, I didn't draw fusion destiny and I didn't resolve Verte, but I drew both Dasher and Celestial and I sent them off um, Forbidden Droplets. And then the next turn, I used Celestial Effect to draw two. So I didn't even need to make the... Um, 
<laughs> the the de the destroyer phoenix, but you know I still drew two. Uh, so yeah, that that engine is just so powerful. Pot of Desire is very similar. Like uh, draw two cards is very very awesome. Like all these cards are just like draw two. Like Pot of Greed is banned for a reason. Um, I don't know. It's it's at one now, and uh, you know I I'd, I'd play three if I could. But just, just a little uh, question about the Pot of Desire. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you ever found it conflicting with the adventure package and the DP? You know, it uh, it definitely is, but you know, you're only activating it as your last resort. So um, you're not starting your turn. Like if you have like, say like Enchantress, whatever, Prank Kid, and Desires, you're not just going Pot of Desires. Like you're going to try to resolve these out as much as you can first, get all of those combo pieces out of your deck, and then towards the end of it, you're really hoping that Pot of Desires turns into two whether they're hand traps or like negates. Um, but yeah, so it, I mean, sometimes if you're forced to do it, like say you kind of bricked and you have the pot, um, like Banishing Fate or Draco back or uh, maybe a piece to your Destiny Hero package, or even like the, the Prank Kids one of spells, like it, it hurts a little, but um, it's nothing like too harmful if you're, if you're able to play still, just like use your other engines. Um, we played one prep as the fifth copies of Souls, uh, six copies of Souls right here, one for one. It was really cool. It could be fanzies or Souls, you know, whatever it wanted to be. It could be either engine. Um, and, uh, you know, if you had like multiple hand traps or you bricked on hand traps, you can get rid of those. Um, or, you know, this is the best discard card. So if you draw the Enchantress with Super Poly or uh, Droplets or one for one, even Twin Twisters, it's like, that's the, that's the combo right there, you know, get, get the maximum amount of value out of that. Um, also, I played the one Thunder Dragon Fusion as the, uh, you know, target from Verte to send and make the butler. Uh, also, it's a follow-up. It searches uh, fanzies afterwards as well. Um, and even hard drawing it, like, if you get nibbed and you have your three names engraved, uh, you can just put them back, even if they're banished too, and just make butler, so it's great. You know, it can be ghost spelled, but I, I was a big fan of Thunder Dragon Fusion. And I also played one Monster Reborn and one Instant Fusion. Uh, so these cards are essentially like the extenders to where you're doing your full Frank Kids combo, and you're also making totally awesome. Uh, so it's just an additional negate on top of uh, anything, you know. As a, if you have the, the links in Grave already, Instant Fusion becomes a one card access code. So, um, you know, Monster Reborn's great. You can steal, like, your opponent's Verte from Grave, use it, uh, like a Baron, Broken Cards, or, you know, you just, like, do your own combo, turn one, and uh, make the Toad with the two Droplets, or Dropsies. Um, but yeah, that's it for the main deck. Um, do you guys have any questions on that, or, or wonder? Any reasoning behind the card choices? Yeah, looks pretty solid. Perfect, yeah. Awesome. Well, without further ado, let's move on to the extra deck. Um, so, you know, we played the standard one of Meow. I played two if I could, but I can't. Uh, yeah, it's really unfortunate. It's so good, honestly. Like, once it's gone, I just I feel like I'm lost. Um, sometimes I like to. Uh, I like to put it back off the pranks um, if I if I'm not doing like butler plays, uh, just so like my pranks become one card starters again the next turn. Um, Doodle do is the best one. It uh, you know it adds it's Rota for your spell and then it adds back the other spell you send off Fancy. So it's it's just tutors the entire deck. Uh, you play two just because this is like the interruption point uh, and then one bow. Um, a lot of people like will try to up these numbers, but I think this is the perfect amount, especially when you're putting it back in phase off the pranks anyways. Um, you really don't need any more. Uh, other than that, I played one Link Spider. Um, you know, some people play two, or this and a Link or a Rebo, but uh, I decided it wasn't necessary because people ended up um, not Nibiruing at the choke point anymore. So when you first have the do to add back with the uh, with the last name, uh, that's when people used to Nibiru, and then you could like link Spider uh, away the Nibiru token, and then Pranks could discard Special Summon the token, uh, make Link Karibo, and then make Verte, right? Um, but you know, since there's so many different engines now doing it there, like I might still have access to four other engines, uh, so or three other engines, so it's just not correct to do that anymore. Um, so that was like the only reasoning. Have you um, the second uh, 
over to Anaconda because it can come up. When yeah, you get it it can. Um, you know, that's definitely like the the most crucial choke point, the nib on the Anaconda. Um, but uh, I think. I think the 16th card could either be the Anaconda or um, maybe even like Dark the Dark Charmer. Um, just like you could steal your opponent's Anaconda. Like, you know, a lot of people are playing it right now. Um, but yeah, one one was perfect today. Uh, my one loss in Phoenix, the second one would have came up. But um, no complaints, no complaints on it at one. Uh, and then we played the one unicorn, one access code. This is like how you clear boards, how you OTK. Uh, just really good cards. Um, I played one exceed, totally awesome. Oh, uh, shout out to Dallas Bailey, the Toad Dally. Um, you know, I saw him for the first time in a couple years today, so huge shout out. It was great seeing him. Um, but yeah, card was just insane. After you do your combo and you uh, special the butler on their turn, um, you're usually special summoning two of the dropsies, uh, and then you can just start your turn with, uh, you know, making Toad. Um, Butler, you know, sometimes isn't the mo the best card to make. Like sometimes Weather Washer is correct uh, versus like Rogue decks, such as like Eldritch or whatnot. But uh, if they do put some monsters on board, um, just putting the the two drop on board, um, play in to make Toad is is definitely nice. Also, like with Super Poly, uh, oh, sometimes you can just Super Poly away your Dew and uh, you know Lampsies or whatever it is, and then make the Rocket and then. Uh, a special back of doing a drop season um, you know you're you're basically uh, making a toad on your turn as well with that um, and then for the fusions I played the one starving venom uh, one destiny hero destroy Phoenix uh, these cards were just insane today they also like work really well together if you pop this uh, pop something then this uh, triggers you know it's a it's a regeki so um, yeah, I, I, I was a big fan of those in Super Poly. And then I decided to play two Butler, um, one Rocket, and one Washer. Uh, shout out to Keegan right here. It's, uh, this misprint, found it in Bull. Um, that's just insane. Like, it's super misprinted. So, you know, uh, if anyone wants it, 100 bucks. And, you know, that's <laughs> no, I'm just fine. I'm just fine. <laughs> um, um, yeah, um... But yeah, no. This card, this card. Actually, I didn't make it today, but I, I made it in Phoenix. Um, the double butlers come up a couple times. Uh, usually, when it does come up, they scoop before. But um, you know, this card might be a second Verte, uh, might be a second Link Spider. I was like torn between those two, or even like Dark the Dark Charmer. Those were like the other options. But I decided to go with the Butler just because uh, you know if you do your full combo and have set Super Poly as well, instead of specialing the two waters for the Toad play next turn, you can just special summon one of each color, and then uh, you know even if it's not a dark deck necessarily, you could uh, you could just Super Poly away the ones you special for a second Butler, and then it's a third Regret. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was the extra deck. So it was it was really it worked really well for me all weekend. Um, and then let's go on to the side deck. So I played one Dino Wrestler Pankratops. Um, the really cool part about this card and Toad is uh, they're the two cards that if they are able to out your butler and you don't use the Regeki effect, these are the two you want to special summon the most just because they're interruptions. Um, that uh, interact with your opponent. You know, he can't special summon back a fusion monster. So, you know, your uh, DPE and Starving Venom aren't, aren't the best, but uh, being able to special these back and get an additional pop or negate is just huge. Um, so that's why I played the Pankratops, really. Um, it it could have been, you know, the third copy of Lightning Storm. Um, however, uh, it, it essentially served the same purpose. Um, and then, you know, we also played the three Twin Twisters. Uh, these were my, like, back row removers, aside from the Draco back in the main deck. Uh, I really didn't fear back row, just because, uh, aside from, like, Floodgates, like, this deck can just play through so many negates. Um, so yeah, just those six for back row. Uh, and then some of the more hand traps that we played that were for more niche matchups. Uh, three Nibiru and three Ghost Bell. Um, you know, Ghost Bell's insane in the mirror match, so is Nibiru. Uh, they're really for the, like, heavy combo decks. Uh, at some certain interruption points, they can be really, uh, really powerful to stop them. And then the last card on the side was three Triple Tactics Talon. Uh, with the uh, rise of a ton of hand traps, uh, such as the 18 I play in my deck, um, 
this card be, what became live all the time. Um, you know, drawing two and digging for your next engine comes up a lot. Um, you know, even ripping a card from their hand is, you know, sometimes detrimental to their combo, even if you only have like one or two interruptions. Um, and also, like the snatch seal came up a lot. That's why. Uh, that's why I kind of want to play the dark or the second verte, just because you can like take and then make another link too. Um, but uh, other than that, like ripping a card out of the hand or drawing two is also just very powerful. But yeah, that's all for the deck. Um, I just wanted to say, I'm pushing pranks out here, um, and yeah, I pushed pranks all weekend. Uh, shout out to Gunna, and uh, that's all. That's all I got for you guys, so Mitchell Martin signing off.